Hey, yo, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. This is Smart DCG, and today I'm going to be going over my current top 10 decks in the standard format heading into regional weekend. We have Toronto Regional Championships coming up this weekend, which will be the final major tournament in the Obsidian Flames expansion before we transition to Paradox Rift next month. We're going to be starting at number 10 and then we're going to work our way all the way to number one the deck lists will be in the description as well if you're looking for them and if you enjoy the content make sure to leave a like and subscribe with that being said let's hop right into it first off i want to give a huge shout out to my sponsor game grid are you looking for paradox rift products shipped directly to your door make sure to check out gamegridslc.com for the best trading card game products on the market they have some of the best prices and a wide selection of singles, booster boxes, and more. You can use code SMARTTCG for 5% off at checkout on all orders, and it's also one of the best ways to support me as a creator. Hopping into number 10 here, we have Urshifu VMAX and Teleon VMAX. Now, this is a deck since Cyrus Davis's NAIC tournament win has remained at the top of the standard format, placing in day twos, along with also winning the Barcelona special event last month. It still is a pretty solid deck. Your goal with this deck is to set up multiple Intellion VMAX with its double gunner ability to put tons of damage onto the board. You can manipulate that with Radiant Alakazam and then use things like Metacham's Yoga Loop and GMAX Rapid Flow to wipe the board. You have Octillery as well with that Rapid Strike Search, which is the lifeline of the deck, which allows you to consistently find those Rapid Strike pieces that you need to be successful. You have Spear Tomb as well in this deck as this card is very, very good versus decks like you VMAX, Arvin Zard, and also decks like Lugia Vister, pretty much anything that relies on cards like Luminion, Spirit Tomb is very, very good against. This deck, I think, still has a lot of potential. It still sometimes runs into consistency issues in the early game, and it is occasionally a little bit too matchup based. It doesn't really have necessarily a very balanced matchup spread. It could hit a bunch of good matchups and start the event incredibly hot, but then run into a couple of decks prepared for you, like Lugia V Star and Fusion Mew, which Fusion Mew still causes you issues as they can attach those fusion energies onto those Genesects to use their fusion strike system through Spear Tomb, and you can kind of just get blown out of the water. So that is one of the issues with this deck. It's not necessarily an incredibly balanced deck where you can beat pretty much anything. You kind of know exactly whether or not you have a good chance to beat them or not based off exactly what they're playing when they flip over that card. So this deck, I think, is still very good. I think it has decent matchups. I think that it's a little bit risky to take two events because you can just get a little bit unlucky um, like in your matchups and there's not a whole lot that you can do. Um, there have been tournament runs that have been started incredibly hot with this deck and then just running into a couple rough matchups that you can't really control um, can sometimes slow this deck down and not necessarily um, give it the results that I think it is capable of having, especially with just how powerful it is when it gets going. But Overall, I think the deck is still very good. It has been performing relatively strong recently, but I think it's the number 10 deck currently in the standard format. Hopping to number 9 here, we have Arceus Steraladon VMAX. Now, this is a deck that was not seen a whole lot of play for quite some time. People thought this deck was dead, but as the metagame began to shift, this deck started to creep its way back into the standard format. And this is the list that Braden Elfert used to get 9th place at the most recent Sacramento Regional Championships. And then this deck did see success at the Lil Regional Championships as well, placing relatively decently in Day 2, having some showing there. And the deck is relatively decent, with Lugia V-Star being one of the best decks in the standard format duraladon with that skyscraper is able to run through those decks pretty consistently judge path is still an amazing combo versus decks like charizard that if you're able to slow them down for a turn or two you can just run them over with that trinity nova which is still an incredibly powerful attack two shotting most things in the standard format you have that industrious incisors on that b barrel as well for consistency when things like path the peak are in play you're going to be able to use that b barrel to draw and refill those hands. One of the biggest differences between other Arc Dura variants of the past is Mawile. Mawile with that tempting trap, this card is going to be here to bring up things like Radiant Greninja, Manaphy, Radiant Serena, the Mute and Charizard, and just there's just a lot of situations that this card comes up in where you'll be able to lock something in the active with that tempting trap. And if you just use the Tempting to Trap for its second effect, your attacks do 90 more damage on the next turn to the active Pokemon, which may sometimes actually show up as a pretty relevant effect. 
I think this deck has a lot of potential. I think that it does take some rough matchups to things like Maridon and Giratina V-Star. However, if you dodge those matchups, you definitely have a good shot at beating most things in the format. Judge Path is still an incredibly powerful strategy, and I do like this variant of Arceus as of right now. This would personally be my go-to variant if I were playing this deck to Toronto Regionals. I think it's the best Arceus variant currently. Already hopping into number eight here, we have Mew VMAX. This is the list that most recently won the Lil Regional Championships. That will be in the description, um, the deck list and everything like that. And it's pretty interesting, but I think this is a really, really cool way to play Fusion Mew. And I definitely think that this deck has a lot of potential in the format. With all eyes going towards things like DTE Mew uh, and Charizard losing a little bit of popularity, I think Fusion Mew has a lot of potential currently in the standard format. That Melodious Echo is as strong as ever, being able to take those early game knockouts, overwhelming opponents. You have Ice Q, which provides a great counter to Spirit Tomb, being able to snipe that, and also just providing a decent attack throughout the game it will come up sometimes having the 4-3 mu v max and 4 genesect with that fusion strike system being able to draw through your deck very very quickly this deck has the potential to beat almost any deck in the standard format this is the list currently as of right now it does play a one of avery this card is incredibly powerful versus decks like lost box very good also versus chen pao any deck that pretty much likes to fill up their bench avery can be absolutely devastating against the one of trekking shoes just makes your deck effectively a 59 card deck which allows you to pretty much be a little bit more consistent and burn through those cards more consistently there is a one of pow pad as well great to get back those supporters and the rest of the list here is pretty standard I think two choice boat is really good in a format where there are decks like Lugia V-Star running around and also Giratina being able to reach that one shot threshold is incredibly important, especially in such close matchups. Then we have the one of Lost City and the one of Path of the Peak as well. This deck still has a lot of potential. I think it's very, very powerful in the format. If you are able to dodge Charizards, admittedly, um, that is one of the issues that this deck does have. The DT variant of the deck has a much better Charizard matchup. However, you just lose to Spear Tomb um, almost every single time unless you're able to boss as orders it up and this deck has a much better answer to spear tomb so you're trading the charizard matchup to become significantly more um, able to stand up to something like spear tomb which i honestly think is a relatively reasonable um, trade-off as of right now with how the metagame is shifting you're still pretty good Hopping to number seven here, we have Charizard EX. Charizard EX is a deck that continues to perform relatively average. We haven't actually seen it get top eight at any regional championships, aside from the Curitiba Regional Championship in Brazil that William Azevedo was able to win, where Charizard completely dominated the tournament. Ever since then, there was a Lost Zone Toolbox variant that got top eight. Um, in Barcelona, I believe, with the Charizard EX. But other than that, it's just been kind of roaming around in the top 16s, top 32s, top 64s of day twos, not necessarily reaching the finish line that I think a lot of people expected it would be capable of doing. To be quite honest, I'm not entirely sure why. I think that the biggest issue that this deck can sometimes run into is consistency. But when it does set up, I think it beats mostly everything in the format. But that's just the thing. Can it set up? And that is one of the big problems that it runs into. However, when it gets going, it's incredibly powerful being able to use that infernal rain ability to load tons of fire energies onto the field to use powerful attacks like burning darkness and combustion blast being able to control the field as well with pidgeot is incredibly powerful being able to search for whatever card you want is just very very good um, the vitality band i think is also very powerful in this deck as of right now with decks like maridon and chen pao running around this card is very very important in the deck i decided to add in the collapse stadium as well i think this card is really good against decks like lost box being able to remove damaged pokemon especially things like Luminion if they're getting Sableye. Artisan is still there just for consistency. I think this is a very, very solid card as of right now. And then a one of Lost City as well to be able to remove things like Sableye's or Dragonite's or, you know, Gardevoir pieces um, off the field. So overall, I think this deck is very good as long as it's able to set up. I've still been trying to figure out exactly the perfect list for it, but this is what I've been at as of right now and one of the versions that I've been testing. I think it has a lot of potential and I would not be surprised if it did even better at Toronto with all the Fusion Mute that's been expected to show up and has been showing up at recent European tournaments. All right, hopping into number six here, we have Maridon. And now this is a deck funny enough that does not perform in any other country uh, or continent other than North America. At the most recent Little Regional Championships, it did not do very well. At the Brazilian Regional Championship as well last month, it did not see a whole lot of success. But in American tournaments, it's doing absolutely fantastic. Anywhere in North America, it seems to be a much better deck, placing in the top 16, two of them at Sacramento Regional Championships. Jesse Parker getting second place at the 
most recent Pittsburgh Regional Championships as well, um, along with Jesse Parker and also um, JW Crewall, Black Steady Righteous, able to get top eight and top four, respectively, at the Peoria Regional Championships as well. So consistently performing well at NA tournaments, I think it's a very, very powerful deck. Judge Path is just an incredibly powerful strategy as of right now. You're able to steal games against a lot of decks, even versus some of your harder matchups like Charizard. If you stick a path on them early in the game, you can just run them over and it will buy you time to build up that board stake, get tons of lightning energies on the field to overwhelm your opponent. I think this deck does have a lot of potential. I think it admittedly does not have a great matchup spread. However, it's just so consistent and has one of the most powerful combos in the game being hand disruption plus path that really makes up for its relatively average matchup spread. It doesn't necessarily beat a whole lot of the top decks aside from Lugia consistently, but it doesn't necessarily lose to them either. And you can really take advantage of opponents stumbling. I think this is one of the best decks at capitalizing on your opponent missing something on a turn um, just because that oftentimes just gives you time to just pretty much overwhelm them with lightning energy and kind of take over the game that way. It's a deck that is very good at capitalizing on your opponent's, you know, running into issues. So overall, I think this deck is very good. Uh, if you want to high roll with those electric generators, you know, get a little bit lucky, run hot, then this is the perfect deck for you. Alrighty, hopping into number five, we have Lost Zone Kyogre. Just for some uh, clarity here, I do have another Lost Zone variant as well, just a little spoiler. On the list, however, um, I decided to separate them this time because I think that both of them are just such different variants as of right now. And today we have Lost Zone Kyogre starting off at the number five slot. A little bit more slower variant, however, it's a little bit um, more stable in my opinion. You have more straightforward strategies. You're not as I you could say chaotic as maybe let's say the Turbo Lost Box variant that's trying to hit turn one, um, like Dragonite or Raikou every single time. You're a little bit more slow, conservative um, in how you play. And this is actually my preferred Lost Zone variant of choice just when it comes to playing. I have a lot of fun with Zamazenta. I love Kyogre as a card. Um, and I think both Lost Zone variants are very, very powerful. The Zamazenta is very, very good versus decks like Charizard. You're able to cram it for 110 and then Zamazenta for 220, which equals perfect math against Charizard that has 330 HP. Kyogre's Aqua Storm as well is incredibly powerful, being able to take multiple prizes to finish off the game. You still also have the Four Seal Stone package with that Pidgeot B and Four Seal Stone, which is very, very good. You know, you get that little bit of extra consistency that originally a lot of lists did not have the Pidgeot V for seal stone we saw a little bit last season a little bit more of an even slower variant of this deck seeing some success and now we have the pidgeot v that allows you to set up your board state a little bit quicker um and you know kind of do exactly what turbo lost box tries to do and that's you know get save light as quickly as possible this deck does have one vacuum though which makes it a little bit slower against decks um that you know you really want to be pushing for turn to save light against you can't necessarily do it as often but i still think that it gains a little bit of consistency with some of the other cards and just kind of how this deck is built overall i think this deck has a lot of potential i think it's still very very good kyogre is an incredible card samazanta is still very good as well i'm not necessarily sure if this is the best lost zone variant but it personally is my lost zone variant of choice and one of my favorite decks to play in the standard format it's really fun and it's also very very powerful right now Moving on to number four here, we have Gardevoir EX. Gardevoir EX has remained pretty much at number one or number two for quite some time. However, it has fallen quite a bit down to number four as of right now. And it's not necessarily saying it's bad. I just am not 100% sure it is the best choice for regional championships as of right now. With players becoming more aware of the time constraints of this deck and knowing how to play against it, this deck has been running into more issues, tying more games than you would like. That's one of the big issues. If you dead draw one game or draw suboptimally, you're pretty much at very best goal going to tie the matchup just because this deck is very slow. However, if you are able to set up in at least both games, you're able to function how you're supposed to, this deck can be oftentimes unbeatable. You can checkmate opponents very, very quickly with this deck, being able to flood the board with draw support Pokemon like Curlia's Gardevoir's and just the deck has everything it needs. When it sets up, it can be absolutely anything. However, that's the one question mark that it sometimes runs into runs into is that sometimes it's not able to do that and it does have some admittedly rough matchups right now against the Lost Zone Toolbox and also Chen Pao which have been performing exceptionally well recently. I think the deck is still very good I just think more people are beginning to figure it out. I have decided to play the second collapse stadium it helps out a lot versus things like Lost Zone Toolbox um, and also sometimes Chen Pao if you need to remove a Pokemon that could get let's say Radiant Greninja so um, I think that this deck still has a lot of potential it will continue to perform relatively well I just think that more people are figuring it out over time and exactly how to play versus it it's still a very good deck though 
Coming number three here, we have Chen Pao EX. This is the highest Chen Pao I think has been in quite some time, and I think that it is absolutely fantastic. This is the list that Owen Kimmerman used, and a bunch of other players have been using at most recent regional championships. Just for some transparency, this is pretty much, in my opinion, the optimal list for the deck. This is the list that has been performing consistently well, and I think is what I would bring to a tournament if I decided to play Chen Pao. Chen Pao has that fantastic Shivery Chill ability, allowing you to get those water energies into the hand. Hail Blade can deal pretty much unlimited damage and you have super cold that allows you to attach as many energy as you like you have fantastic draw engine as well in b barrel and along with radiant greninja which provides an amazing attack with moonlight shuriken paired up with canceling cologne going through manaphy and also concealed cards as most of you know is one of the best abilities ever printed onto a card this deck has it all when it gets going it can unfortunately sometimes run into some consistency issues it can be a little bit clunky um, if you miss a couple of vip passes on turn one and then you draw into them off the industry's incisors if you miss ear to turn one and just completely stumble you only get one back caliber out and no other fridge backs in the field there are there are actually a lot of things that can go wrong unfortunately with this deck but when you do get going it's pretty much unbeatable it's just if you can get going that's always a question you kind of have to ask but when you do it's very very difficult to stop Coming number two, I did say there was another Lost Zone variant on this list. I did not say how high it was, though, and this is going to be the Turbo Lost Zone variant. This is currently the list that I have been testing, and I've been really enjoying the deck. Your goal pretty much very similar to most other Lost Zone decks, except you're trying to hit turn two Sableye as quickly as possible with those triple loss vacuum to four seal stone. You can hit turn one Dragonite or Raikou as well. Pretty much just a hyper aggressive version of normal Lost Box decks. It's very, very good. You know, your goal is just to use those comfy flower selectings along with Chorus's experiment. Get lots of cards in the Lost Zone aided with things like Lost Vacuum, and you're able to get off and running very, very quickly. This deck has pretty much all the potential in the world. When it sets up and gets going, it can beat absolutely anything in the format. It does admittedly run into some issues sometimes versus Lugia if they are able to hit their collapse at opportune moments, or if you play against a deck that just sticks an Iono against you, that can be kind of frustrating. For the stadiums, I've decided to include three, which is admittedly a little bit higher than what a lot of lists have currently been having i have one pokestop i think pokestop is still great being able to burn through the deck as quickly as possible artisan is a great consistency card along with beach court as well just providing an extra switch out very very good stadium card and if it sticks for more than one turn either being artisan or beach court you just get so much usage out of those two cards specifically pokestop is sometimes a risky card as you can pokestop away bad things which is why instead of playing the second pokestop i have decided to opt for the one of beach court i think it's a little bit more of a stable card and you know pretty much always provides use when you put it down on the field whereas pokestop can sometimes hurt you i think this deck has all the potential in the world i think it's absolutely fantastic and definitely should be a consideration heading into the toronto regional championships Alrighty, hopping into number one, we have Lugia V Star. Lugia is back on top, and I think it's the best deck in the standard format as of right now. Now, Single Strike Lugia was at the top for quite some time, or near the top, and has been replaced by Colorless Lugia. Colorless Lugia has fantastic attackers as of right now, with things like Snorlax with that unfaced fat and Thumping Snore, providing a great one prize attacker especially against decks like lost zone toolbox you have weird ear which is able to knock out most things towards the end of the game being able to deal almost unlimited damage in the standard format um, being able to deal 400 plus damage in some situations which is way more than enough to knock out most things so we have also the drapion v which is great against decks like mu v max and also gardevoir being able to knock out that gardevoir with that dynamic tail is very very important and we have the brand new card from the pokemon 151 set that has pretty much reshaped this deck X. One of the big problems this deck would run into is that it just sometimes wouldn't have the firepower to finish games or deal with things like Giratina V-Star or Tyranitar. Now you have that with that Mew EX's genome hacking, along with a fantastic ability and restart, allowing you to draw out of some very sketchy situations when your opponent uses things like Iono or Roxanne. The Luxury as well is a great card versus things like Charizard versus the Mirror Match as well. Being able to knock out Lugia V-Stars against the Lugia Mirror Match or, you know, versus something like Charizard, you're able to knock out the that Pidgeot with that Reversal Energy Bosses Orders combination. This deck has it all. It's an incredibly powerful deck. It's more consistent as well um, than the Single Strike variant, and I think that it is currently the best deck in the format and definitely deserves a spot on this list at the very top. After the Sacramento Regional Championships, I think it solidified itself there with Multiple being in top eight and Alexander winning the tournament. It just has everything you need. But anyways, that is going to do it for today. If you enjoyed the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Let me know what you think of the list in the comments. As I said, the deck list will be in the description as well. But anyways, with that being said, thank you so much for all the support. As always, I genuinely appreciate it. This is SmartTGG, and I'll speak with you again soon. Peace out.
If you're looking to improve your game, I do offer coaching on MetaFi. I was ranked in the top 16 ranked players in the world last season, and I know what it takes to improve your game. My students won a combined three regionals last year, and I know what it takes to reach that next level. I do offer a free coaching consultation so you can get an idea whether or not coaching works for you. And along with that, I also have a singular sessions, training packages, and more. If you're looking to find out more information, feel free to book that free consultation or also don't hesitate to shoot me a message on Discord. My Discord will be in the description. All right. Thanks for sitting around and listening to this. I appreciate it. This is SmartTGG. I'll speak with you again soon. Peace out.